What's good, y'all? And welcome to my review for Summers for Survivor SummerSlam for Survivor Series 2021. Now, as you guys may have noticed, if you guys have you guys have paid attention to Twitter and hell, maybe you just thought felt this way after the show wrapped up. Um, that a lot of people were not too high on Survivor Series this year, and I would have to agree. Now, I did not hate the show or anything. I still relatively enjoyed the show. I really did enjoy it while I was watching. There were, most of the matches were pretty good. There wasn't one match I straight up hated. There was one match I thought was in, uh, unnecessary in the history that I didn't even really bother watching most of it, which we'll get talk about that match when we get there. But I overall did enjoy myself, but I will say this is probably one of the weakest pay-per-views of the year, and probably one of the, probably one of the weakest Survivor Series, at least in recent memory. This, this was not all that. This was, this, this Survivor Series wasn't all that, man. Like, especially in comparisons of, like, past years, like, I, this one just wasn't all that good. Mostly because there was really only two really standout matches. The rest were all kind of good to, why am I here, you know? They were like, eh, it was good, but, like, nothing too crazy. But, the two matches that were pretty, that were that the two the two matches that were great were fucking yes. fantastic. Both of them, yes. both Charlotte and Becky, as well as Biggie and Roman, both of them were fantastic matches and definitely what saved the show's rating for me. <laughs> if those two matches weren't that good, my rating would have dropped a lot lower. But anyway, guys, without further ado, let's just jump right in, boys. So first off, we started the show off with Becky and with Becky and Charlotte. Now apparently, this was originally planned to. End the show, which I'm kind of glad to do because if they didn't, because if they, if this match didn't start the show, that probably could have messed up pacing. I might not even like the show as much as I did. That probably also would have the this. They didn't start off good with this one, then it kind of like dipped, and then Roman kind of brought it back up. But anyway, so but I'm kind of glad they didn't because there was really nothing too crazy about it. I still think the Big E match was a bit more appropriate for it because it's from Ridge. I think that should have been the main event, uh, regardless. But either way, this, uh, this was our uh, this was our show. Now, apparently, um, as of recently, there's been it's been revealed that there's actually like a real life beef between Charlotte and Sa and between Charlotte and Becky. I'm kind of out of the loop with the whole thing. I haven't really been paying attention, but yeah, I, you could tell there's definitely some beef between when, when you watch that because oh boy, they were out for blood. <laughs> we start off this match. Fast and furious. These these women were throwing hands like they were trying to kill each other. <laughs> they were going right at man. I also found it kind of interesting that this year it looks like that, that they might have find that WWE has finally gotten rid of the T-shirt thing. Because uh, you guys know, for like last few sure. Summer Slams, um, I don't know, I keep saying Summer Slams, Survivor Series, we've they've been always having the wrestlers wear T-shirts of whatever brand they're associated with. Now we had that. Now we of course we had that Battle Royal match where they did wear the T-shirts. But most times, you know, they don't have wristbands, they don't have um, like shirts, they just have their gear in the colors of whatever brand they're associated with, more times than not, at least for this year's summer, this year's Survivor Series, which I hope this becomes a constant thing, because the, the shirts do look kind of dumb. But the one thing I found kind of interesting is you had Becky come out there, she was wearing like this red bodysuit. Honestly, it looked a little bit ridiculous if you ask me. Well, Charlotte came out either in black or the darkest blue I have ever seen in her ring. Either way, man, like I said, these women, th we started off this match fast and furious. These women were throwing hands and they were trying to kill each other. They going at it and then, of course, later on the match, you guys know, uh, Charlotte went on to the top rope and Becky threw her off there. And like, literally, Becky yated her ass to like the fifth dimension because... Charlotte took a bit of a nasty fall there, man. It looked pretty bad. And then once they get back in the ring, they just slap the living piss out of each other, man. And they just keep going at it, man. You had Charlotte try, you had Becky try to lock in the figure four, which uh, Charlotte countered. And then you had Charlotte hitting the disarmor. And then there was so many. Then you're like, oh, most when they had when Charlotte when uh, Becky locked in the the. the Figure four, they like yeah, Becky like calls her like a bitch and just starts slapping her, and they just start slapping anymore. each other. <laughs> it was absolutely insane, man. But I loved every second of it. Legit, man. I would probably say this. It was if this was either their best match ever, or if not, or if not, their best match since that last one, the stadium match they had back in Evolution, I believe is when that was. If I'm if I'm not like correct, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But this match is amazing. You know, any but that but anyway, man. This match. Was fucking fantastic, man. Anyway, we end the match out with Charlotte trying to get with Charlotte going in for a roll up. 
on Becky, but the but since she was grabbing since, since she was holding on the rope from Levin, the ref caught her. Becky Mans reversed it, then she grabbed on the rope, but the ref didn't catch it, and of course and of course finessed her way to get the victory. Um, not really too surprised with this one. Um, the ending could have been better if you if it would have been more clean. I kind of get what people say, like, no, it should have been more of a clean bit rather than more of, like, a fuck finish. But either way, man, the match was fantastic, so I don't think that's good. So I didn't really, so I'm not really going to let that harper too, too much on my enjoyment of the match. Either way, this was definitely a fantastic match and probably the best match of the show, man. If there's one match I would recommend you guys check out, if you guys, for whatever reason, skipped on, some, uh, skipped on Survivor Series this year, definitely check out Becky and Sharp. That was definitely the best match. So then next up, we, of course, had the men's Survivor Series match where we had uh, for Raw, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and Austin Theory. And then SmackDown, we had Drew, Jeff Hardy, King Woods, Happy Corbin, and Sheamus. So, this match was also overall pretty good. I did enjoy this match. We started off the match with with, with uh, KO and Seth kind of bickering at each other. Seth, is, uh, KO's trying to convince Seth to let him start the match off. So then once he does, my man starts kicking the rope. He's like hyping himself up. And then my man just goes, and then my man just leaves. <laughs> KO just leaves, man. He goes under the bottom, he rolls out through the bottom rope, and then just walks away. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. And so the match kind of goes on from there. Seth would end up becoming the sole survivor of Team Raw. There was a lot of cool shit we got in this match anyway. Like when um, uh, when Drew McIntyre and Bob Lashley were going out on the outside. I thought that was overall pretty cool. Jeff Hardy got a cool, got some really good spots in there with Seth Rollins. Um, <laughs> probably one of my favorite parts was when uh, Drew got, when Drew and, and, uh, and uh, Bobby Lashley both got uh, counted out. Seth, they get back in the ring because like they're, they're arguing with the refs and the refs telling like you guys got counted out. Seth's like bye bye, ha <laughs> ha He's rubbing his face and then Drew just hits him with a Glasgow kiss, man. <laughs> Fucking legendary, man. Um, but anyway, Seth would end up winning. Seth would end up winning the match with a with a curve some on Jeff Hardy, I believe it was, and that is how he won the match and would become the sole survivor. Of Team Raw, good match, but you know, but like I said, this, but like I said, man, you know, nothing there. Like this and the Roman match were really the only really great matches and the really only standout match we got. Everything else was pretty good outside the Battle Royal, but there was really out. But then, like I said, nothing outside of those two matches really knocked my socks. So then, next up, we had the Battle Royal. Well, actually, before we got to the Battle Royal, we had the segment with Vince McMahon who uh, showed his face tonight. Where he got this egg, this like Cleopatra egg from the rock that's worth a hundred million dollars or something. He brought in Roman, he wanted to show it off to him, and then Roman said, well, after he told him that's like thing, this thing is worth a hundred million dollars. Roman's like, oh, this could be my next contract. <laughs> Gotta love the travel cheap. Now, later on the show, we found that Vince's egg was missing. Of course, we could have stolen it, and we're probably going to figure this out more on Raw, if not also on Smash. Um, as you guys know, and of course, because of how much teasing there was about The Rock tonight, or at least from the main event with Rock, with Roman hitting a rock bottom, and all the mentions of The Rock throughout the show, I thought we were actually going to get uh, The Rock tonight. And there's been like a bunch of rumors been uh, circling for a while now that The Rock was going to show for some was going to show for the Survivor Series. As you guys know, that did not happen. So that definitely begs the question of what the hell is going on with this egg, and if, and if we're going to get seen the rock on Monday, which I think is a good chance we probably will. Then we'll probably find out. I, if you're if you're asking me who I think stole the egg, I think there's a good chance it was probably Roman, maybe just to like also build towards their feud possibly. Although it could be someone else. We don't know. We'll maybe find out more. Hopefully, on that. Anyway, guys. So after that. We then got to we then um, after we got to, we then went to the battle royal. Which why the fuck was this match even on the card? Like why was Damian Priest and Shinsuke Nakamura on the pre-show and not this shit? This match was pointless. In fact, I didn't even watch this match. I didn't even know this was even on the card. This had to have been maybe added on SmackDown or something. But anyway, you want to know what I was doing during this match, Joe? I went out and grabbed dinner. Would you guys wonder what I grabbed for dinner? I grabbed some pasta, some dumplings uh, that were um, uh, uh, fried, and um, 
What else did I grab? Uh, some like chicken and like some, and, like, some chicken with it, or like some steak with it. Pretty good meal. It was definitely more entertaining getting brought in there and grab my food than this entire match was. I was basically listening to it throughout on my way to the uh, as my way over to the Jade to get my dinner just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Just so I know, okay, let's see what's going on with the match and make sure I didn't end the match the next match didn't start while I was on my way back. But anyway, almost won it. Who the fuck? Cares? So then next up that's then we had the tag match between the Usos and RK Bro. Once again, another good match. But nothing you haven't seen already seen before. I will say probably I will say that without the best part of the match was, as probably most of you had suspected, was that amazing RKO from out of nowhere. Excellent, excellent RKO, man. I love that and a beautiful RKO from Randy, which Randy also made history today, as you guys may have known, where he is actually now holds the record for most amount of Survivor Series matches for a single. WWE Superstar, which, hey, congrats to I'm shocked it's Randy, and not like maybe John or someone, but then again, John has been gone for a while now, while Randy has been around basically since, like, what, 2003, 2004-ish, so it makes sense why he would have that record now. Kind of surprising, honestly, man. Crazy. And apparently he's not too far off from taking the Raw route to for, ta the, for taking the Raw record as well, so that's also pretty shocking as well, so yeah. Soon enough, Randy's going to have the record for most amount of Survivor Series matches and most amount of Raw matches. So, shout out to Randy, man. Shout out to him. Anyway, a couple good things about this match was, first off, that you have this one part where I, I believe it was Jimmy Mive and Jalen Lilly just like throws himself into like, into, into like Matt Riddle in the corner, man. He came out. He was speeding like a bat out of hell, man. This man, you thought he was the Flash for hot that was how quickly and how fast he was going over Matt Riddle. You also have this one part of Matt Riddle, like, he tries to hit a JTS on the Uso, and he, like, completely misses. He, like, doesn't even touch him. It looks pretty bad, honestly. And, of course, then there was that legendary RKO! From out of nowhere! At the end of the match, man. So, like I said, overall good match with a fantastic ending, man. But, once again, nothing, nothing too, too crazy. And after this, this is when I found out that the A was missing. And then next up, we found, we, found, we got this... Video package from Zia Lee, which apparently first aired on SmackDown. I didn't watch SmackDown last. I didn't watch SmackDown uh, two nights ago. I was watching because my school was hosting a, a screening of the remake of Mulan, so I decided I'm fucking gonna watch that instead. <laughs> instead, another shit episode of SmackDown. So yeah, I didn't. So this is the first time I saw this, and on the one hand, I want to make fun of it because like, what is this Shang-Chi knockoff shit, man? But at the same time, I do want to give them props. For at least trying to do a video package for Zion Lee and not just throwing her out there and doing something a bit different by going with this comic book look to it, but it's cheesy, it's kind of dumb, but I give them props for at least doing something. Still doesn't make it any less dumb and cheesy like an obvious Shang-Chi knockoff, man. But anyway, it's fine. I don't know, I'm not really any more hyped about Zion Lee coming to me and now than I was. Then. So then. Next up, we had the Women's Eliminator match, um, which also, once again, was pretty good, but nothing too crazy. Like I said, like after the Becky match, nothing I thought was particularly memorable in terms of matches outside of that. And, of course, Rome. These were, like, the only two really, really big memorable matches that we got. Everything else was just kind of, eh, you know? So next up, we had the Women's match, which, like, once again, this was pretty good, man. And But, like I said, nothing too, too crazy. So we had, for Raw, we had Bianca, Rina... Liv Morgan, I must say, was looking fun as hell tonight, man. Seriously, man, I swear. <laughs> Liv Morgan. Oh, boy! She fine, man. But anyway, that's what I'm going to stop there before, I, before someone tries to cancel me. Because how dare I say a woman's attractive. <laughs> but anyway. Liv looked, Liv looked amazing. And Zelina Vega. For SmackDown, we had Sasha Banks, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi Blackheart, Natalia, as well as Tony Storm. Now, the ma this match once again was fun, pretty good, and and almost every woman who I cared about ended up getting an elimination. Uh, Tony ended up getting two, I think so, and then I believe then Shayna got an elimination. Bianca got a couple of eliminations. She ended up being the sole survivor for Team Raw, which I have my issues with. I think it should have been like Tony or something. Uh, Shotzi or literally anybody else. Shayna, you know? 
I love I love Bianca, but that should have been with somebody else that's a little bit younger. The WWE needs to, is try should be trying to put over. But I digress. Anyway, so you have those. So you had so you had uh, them and as and as those two, I believe Sha I believe Sasha also got an elimination as well. And I don't know if I said this already, but I believe Shayna also got one as well too. So anyway, we start the match off with Zelina with uh, Car Carmella with Tony Storm. Carmella, of course, so Car Corey Graves was simping over his woman like always, man. And they start the match off, and then after Tony throws like, a couple punches at her, she like tags in Zelina. Is like my mask, my mask, where's my mask? You know, she's trying to get her mask, and then she like gets into the ring. And I think what happened was that Reina just like pushed Zelina Vega off the apron, which ended up like, making Zelina take the mask with her. And like she starts arguing with Car, and then Carmella starts arguing with Reina. And eventually, Tony Storm ends up getting the victory and pins her. So you had that. Also, Liv Morgan also did get an elimination as well, which I was happy about. But she ended. But like I said, Liv should have been the sole survivor instead. I think Liv, like, even though we all know she's gonna lose against Becky Lynch, whenever they have their match, at the very least, it wouldn't have hurt to make her look good, you know. But whatever. I digress. Anyway, man. So you had that. So you had them, and then eventually. As the match progresses on, you actually have this really cool spot with uh, Shayna where she like uh, she's up on the top rope. She like grabs Rena's arm and then she does like a tornado like arm bar thing where she like jumps off the top rope, spins around in midair, and then like and they're both on the ground. And she locks in an arm bar on Rena Ripley, which eventually she like transitions it into the character of Clutch Man. Looked fucking amazing. Then we now let's get to the dumb shit. Now later on in the match, Team Smacker started to just Starts is like come to come on, but you had Shayna, like you are not Shayna. Shotzi push, uh, pull Sasha off the apron around the mid part, around the earlier part of the match. Be like, you're not part of this. Get out of here. And then eventually, once Sasha became the woman, she, uh, uh, Shotzi pushed her out of the ring again. And this time, the ref is counting, and then like her and Sasha are arguing. They're like pushing each other. Then she like pushes in. Then she's like pushed into Reina. Or into uh, Shayna, I'm sorry. And then Shayna gets pushed around by Sasha. And everyone starts to cape Sasha Banks out of the ring. Now, I now I would have some of my problems with Sasha being eliminated in a countout. But I would not be nearly as pissed if this dumb shit didn't happen. Where you can clearly see Shane, Sasha gets her half of her body through the bottom rope twice. Twice. In the match, yet this dumbass rep is still counting. Now, how many times have we, ladies and gentlemen, whether during our times of watching wrestling, have we seen a wrestler, whether it's AEW, New Japan, WWE, NXT, put half their, where they're both on the outside and their opponents are on the outside, put half of their body in there to break the count, come right back out, and continue the beat down on the outside of the rings? many times and in every single one of those cases the count is broken off and the ref starts at zero well apparently this ref is either dumb or blind because like i said sasha does it twice and the ref keeps counting until sasha's counting out what the fuck that has to be some of the dumbest shit i've ever seen man i was so happy when i was watching jay's review and he started ranting about that i was like yes thank you <laughs> Seriously, that shit was dumb as hell, and that definitely harbored, harbored my enjoyment of the match a lot, significantly with that shit. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Who books this shit? Who produced this shit? What the fuck is this shit? Who came up with this shit? Anyway, eventually, eventually, Bianca becomes the fight, becomes the soul, becomes the last member of Team Raw, and she ends up defeating everybody else to win the match. Now, I love Bianca. She's one of my favorites currently right now. But she should not have. But she should not have been the soul survivor. I agree wholeheartedly with Jay that it should have been either Shotzi, Shayna, or Liv Morgan that got this. That got that got the rub for this. Why Bianca? Listen, I love Bianca, but she's already a made woman. She had WrestleMania. She had her win. She had her women's title. And sure, she lost to the best. She lost to Becky in 26 seconds, but she's good. She didn't need this. Liv needed this because they because of how they poorly they booked her. Shayna for the same reason as well as Tony Storm. Why Bianca and not Liv Morgan? Because we already know she's gonna lose to Becky whenever they have the women. So why? So what's the harm making her at least look good 
before it. You know what I mean, man? Like, what the fuck is this shit? Like I said, good match all around. I didn't hate the match, but Christ, that but, but Christ, that Sasha spot was fucking terrible. And now the main event, Roman and Vicky. Now before that, we had this awesome segment between Paul Heyman and Kayla, which I love every time Kayla and, and Paul Heyman are, are ever having a segment. It's, gonna, it's always entertaining, man. Like this time she snuck up on him, Paul Heyman had a heart attack, and then he was going off about Adam Pierce. Pierce. He really emphasized the Pierce and like the look on Kayla's face and everything, man. It was the funniest shit ever. Then when she tells him, oh, by the way, Black Wilder suspension is no longer deaf. And he's like, Nani? <laughs> Great shit, man. Great shit. Anyway, on to the match. Match is fantastic. We started off with Roman and Biggie going in the collar of the time, and then Biggie just like throws um, Roman to the, into like the one of the corners. He gets out of the ring and, and Paul Heyman is like, you must do this, my tribal chief. And Biggie's like, come on, boy. And he's like, get your mind straight as he's pacing around, man. After that, man, we were off to the races, fast and furious. Like, we have Biggie going for that splash he does on the apron. He ended up missing, and then he ended up having to sell his knee for the rest of the match. Then Roman goes in there, grabs the drive-by. Then later on, we had, like, Roman hit Biggie with, like, three Superman punches in a row. But he kept getting up, and, like, there was this one epic one where Roman's, like, doing the whole, ooh! He still thinks Biggie's on the ground. And then when he, like, kind of, like, leans forward back up, he sees Biggie's just standing, just standing right in front of him, staring at him. Fantastic, man. Anyway... Later on in the match, he ended up throwing Biggie into the barricade, and I think I didn't believe I believe they, like, they were like throwing each other on the announce table too as well, man. There was so much good shit in this match, and then eventually he like does like a Superman punch off the steel steps, throws him into the ring. Oh, and there's also this one spot where Biggie spears Roman through the fucking ropes onto the floor. Legendary, man. Then. You had like Roman spear the ever little piss out of Big out of Big E, and then of course we end the match with, with Roman Spear and Big E to of course get the one and two and three. Man. Fantastic match. I don't know if I'm saying this is better than what we had with Drew last year, but this was a fantastic match. It's all right, man. And yeah, man, that is everything we have for Survivor Series this year. Overall, it was a great show. Two fantastic matches that I were that were definitely that were definitely amazing. I definitely recommend you guys would check out if you guys skipped Survivor Series, but everything else in between, like, like I would say that, that I would say the show is like a sandwich. You had two pieces of excellent bread. That being Sasha, that not Sasha, that being Becky and Charlotte and Biggie and Rose. But the meat inside the sandwich was average at best. Pretty good. But the bread is so good that you almost kind of forgive it a little bit because of how good that damn bread is. <laughs> seriously, seriously, those two, those two matches were fantastic, man. But yeah, man. Overall, <clears throat> and like little chick, I said, if I, those two matches weren't there, my rating would be significantly lower than what I'm about to give. Overall, my rating for Survivor Series this year is an eight out of ten. I was originally gonna give this an eight point five, but after I watched JD's review, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm lowering my rating. And if those two matches weren't as good, I probably would have given the show like a six, probably maybe a seven, if I was feeling generous. But, um, yeah, man, it was an overall great show. I really did enjoy Survivor Series this year, but like I said, that's mostly from those two matches. Everything else was, like, good to, like, eh, you know. But, you know, decent show, pretty good show. Uh, hopefully Raw will give me something to be interested in. Maybe day one might be good. We'll have to wait and see on that, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, guys, that is where we end this video off. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, leave your thoughts down in the comments, guys. Did you love Survivor Series? Did you hate it? Leave it all down below, guys, and... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flag, at Lake South Scripture Box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.